let us talk about the major road companies which came to Dominica to resurface the roads on the entire island in the 1980s under the reign of the Freedom Party. I sang a calypso that was performed at the Calibishi Calypso competition in the 80s, I think 85 or 86 thereabout. And in this Calypso, reference was made to the road. Investors come into Great Calibishi Street, but I'll prefer sending them on the beach to evacuate all day. Finish it. I mean, sorry, I didn't mean to say the last word I said. I meant to finish the sentence. <laughs> anyway, so there were three major road companies Nello Eltier, Russian Tomkin, and Sintra. I think they were Canadian and, and British, different companies I, I, from different parts. But as boys, we remember that those companies came into Dominica to surface the entire road network. And Sintra was the company that had the contract to do the Marigot, I think, down to Portsmouth Area Road, I think. Nelo Eltier, or one of them had to do from Concord to um, Fortney. And you see how the roads are narrow. The roads were wider before. There's some story about the Prime Minister telling them to save money, short, narrow the roads and stuff like that. I do not know how, why. I didn't research that, so I, I'm not too sure. So their roads were narrower. Central roads was wider, as you can see, with big, nice drains. And Nello LTA, I think, had the west coast going to the other side. So the entire road network was looked after. But before we had Sintra in the north, in Calibishi for sure, we remember we spoke about the flowers on both sides of the streets of the road in Calibishi. And there were no gaps, only little footpaths. So you go inside by tips there, you have a gap. Right ac across from tips, you had Charles, then you had Vito living right next to Idalin and them right there. Vito, I cannot remember Vito's last name, no, but it will come to me eventually. Vito was a little short man, very red short man. He, he was Phil's both father, Pempe. I think Mr. Victor something. Victor what again, the boy? Because we had Victor Palo, but Palo was a young boy. Vito was an older guy. So Vito, I remember, was a driver. Vito had a truck. I think a two-ton or one-ton truck. And Vito got a job to drive them big Sintra dumpers, but Vito cannot drive using mirrors because on them big dumpers, you have to use your rear view mirror to back up, and Vito can't do that. So short Vito, now, who always had a pipe smoking, had to glince outside, and he was very short. Vito was about five feet, five, five foot one and a half inch. So Vito now trying to look back in these big commercial trucks, and Vito was having a rough time. So fellas used to direct Vito, but Vito was an a interesting fella. We, was, we can speak about Vito for a while longer in terms of a technique he used to stop his truck one time. He had no brakes. And he was te testing the truck. And when the police tell him, all brakes! The police watching his foot because the police realized the brake pedal soft. At that time, the fellas used to drive with no brakes, you know. The fellas, listen to me, if you could drive in Calibishi at the time, you could drive anywhere in the world, you know. Because fellas would drive drunk, for one, and, and not get into accident. And fellas would drive with no brakes down Big Hill. And somehow managed to go get there safe. So Vito, had, Vito didn't have brakes, he went to test the vehicle and when the instructor told him to mash brakes, he really mashed the brake pedal. But Vito used his left leg and he just pulled up the handbrake because the handbrakes was between the passengers. So Vito does, the same time he pressed in the brake, his left leg does glince in and putting up that handbrake and Vito stopping. So Vito brought that same tradition into his employment at Sintra. He got a job to drive the dumper, but I don't think Vito could drive the dumper. That jumper was too big for Vito. And Vito could not re reverse. Not looking back. And you could not see when you look back, so you had to have people directing you. So all fellas like me directing Vito. Mr. Vito, stop, stop! <laughs> to, 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 um, to dump his sand or whatever it, they, were, they were dumping. But the point I was trying to make is that before Sintra came, we had those flowers lining both sides of the road. With just little 
foot path. So by tapes I said by Vito, by Idalin and them there, by my Mama Outen. Um, somehow I believe the road to between Mama Outen and the other side was wider too, but maybe in my mind it was bigger. As we grow, it got smaller. Um, or maybe some encroachment might have taken place on the road. Because the back street road were wide enough, you know, wide. But somehow I think they get narrower. I don't know. Maybe people plant flowers by mistake. Closer. Um, but, you know, we'll see. I hope eventually the footpaths do not go away. Because the footpaths were neat and generous footpath. But over time, I am seeing the, the, the narrowing. So somebody must look into that. Probably the village council should look into that. Okay, on the next episode, I will speak about what I think happened with the flowers. Um, following the construction of the roads in Kalibishi. That's on the next episode.